here today with Coach Brian Randall of the Randall Lions. How are you doing today, Coach? I'm well. How are you? I, I am blessed. I am blessed. So uh, one of the things I'm trying to do in these interviews is kind of illustrate the way coaches move around. Um, you know, to, 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 to a lot of us, you know, if, if you don't know all this program, just suddenly here's this coach. Uh, you know, I can't remember who, who said it in music, but it, you know, after 15 years of touring dives, uh, we were an overnight sensation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And just, uh, uh, kind of th- walk us through your, your coaching career. All right. Well, I, I started off at, uh, at Foster High School uh, many moons ago. Many moons ago, I got hired on as a defensive back coach there <clears throat> and a freshman coach. I uh, spent a year there, got married, moved to Dallas into the, the Mansfield area. We spent five years in Mansfield, got a divorce, came home, and went to Ailey Taylor, right? So I came home back to Ailey Taylor, and uh, I got there in 09, and I was there for 11 years. Um, five as the head coach. Um, <clears throat> after we left Ailey, we went to May Creek High School. We were at May Creek High School for one year during that pandemic, and then this opportunity opened up and, and it just kind of, it worked out. It worked out. Now let's talk a little bit about that and the background, some of the background on that. So you're the head coach at Randall High School, uh, which is named for your dad. So yes. talk a little bit about some relationship you had with your dad and what it means to you to be able to coach someplace that's a, that's named it specifically to honor. Dad, dad he embodied hard work, right? Like that's that's what he he does. When we moved here from Lamarck, because I guess he spent 21 years here as the superintendent. Um, he was a superintendent at Lamarck. Before that, he was the assistant superintendent in the Woodlands in Conroe ISD. And before that, he was a he was a building principal. Then uh, I'm kind of take I'm talking about him backwards, right? So from being a building principal before that he was an assistant principal and before that he was an act teacher. So growing up in that, all you know is work, right? You just see him go to work. And that's kind of how all of us are. Like all of us four boys, we, we know what hard work is. We know how to go to work. And that's the one thing that we really, we really took from, from watching him <clears throat> grow as a, as a, as a leader, you know, like, one of the stories I always tell about him is that he's the, he's the building principal at Knox junior high. And I remember having to go to one of his teacher's houses where he was laying grass. Like dad used to lay grass. He used to cut yards, like drive 18 wheelers, believe it or not. Like I remember being a small child and being inside the 18 wheelers, he's driving the load here and there, you know, like he's just one of those guys is just a, a worker bee. But for you to, go outside and see your building principal laying grass in your yard and cleaning out your, you know, your flower bed. It really says something about his character and how humble he is. Right. Cause you know, some people, some people might take issue with that, you know, but that's the one thing that he's really, he really, really, we all kind of embodied on how to be humble and, and help people and do what you have to do for your family. You know, he had four boys, so he's had, he had to work, <clears throat> work with people. Now, you, you, you talked about if your dad a, as a leader and now a little bit different of a leadership role, but you've been in a leadership role um, at Taylor, at Maid Creek, and that, now at Randall. In addition to building a program from scratch there at Randall, um, one of the aspects of that is you're coaching the coaches. You're preparing the coaches for whatever uh, might be next for them. So, Talk a little bit about the, the mentor role of a head football. Yeah. Well, things have changed so much since I got into the game. You know, when I got into it, it was VHS and you had to drive and meet people to exchange film. And it was a little different. So with Huddle, it simplified a lot of things. It simplified a lot of things for a lot of people. So that's the one thing that I always tell our guys. I'm like, y'all don't know how good you have it. You know, because younger coaches tend to want, you know, they want to hurry up. They want to hurry up, want to hurry up and play and go home. They want to hurry up and go home. Now. And we always have the stress about just, hey, sometimes you just got to sit there and do it. You know, like you can't. It's one of those things that you just can't, you can't rush. 
Now, the one thing I always remind my coaches is that when you're talking to kids and when you're handling these kids, pretend like that's your kid. Like, oh, you don't want somebody you. hooping and hollering and screaming at, at, at your child in their face. And if you are that type of coach, if you're a fiery, passionate coach, make sure you love on those kids after you ring them. You know, that's the biggest thing. Because once you build that relationship, then, you know, like I know, like kids will do anything you ask them to do if they trust you, you know. And that's the biggest thing is getting them to, to truly earn these kids' trust, call them on the phone, call their parents and check. We do a, like a, a call log. So you have to call and you have to ask the kid something about himself. Not just about like, you know, how your grades or anything like that. Like, what, what do you enjoy doing? That way you can learn your position kid and you build those lifelong relationships. I have three kids on my staff that I coach. Actually, now I have four. I have four because we picked up Jalen's little brother. So I got I got four guys, Javaris Williams, um, <clears throat> Jalen Lavez, Christopher White, and Isaiah Lavez. All four of those guys are on my staff. And I was on the staff that coached Javaris, and I was on the staff. Well, then I actually – I coached um, the other three. You know, those, those are my guys. So it's, it's kind of neat because you get to see those kids grow. You get to watch those kids grow from a – gosh – from 14 years old, you know, into 28 year old men now, 27 year old men running around here. And it's, it's a neat thing, but they're good. They're good kids. They're good kids, but it's all about character. It's all about character. All right. So you, you, you stepped in there a couple of years ago now, uh, or has it been that long? anyway, uh, and you know, the program's just starting. Look, I mean, you, you played a couple of games now, yes, sir. uh, and now you're going to be stepping into to a UIL district. So, what what, what are the what have you seen from your kids so far, and what do you think the Lions look like for uh, 2022? I think we're going to be good. I think, I mean, I know the the right thing to say is, hey, we're going to compete and do the right thing. But I, I think we're going to do more than compete. I think we're going to, you know, we, we kind of got chip on our shoulder. You know, they changed the rule a little bit on us this past year because we're going to play we're going to play five A football with four A numbers in the building, right? Like we're gonna have 4A numbers next year playing 5A ball. In the past, they've used the multiplier and it'd just be a, a 1.33. Well, they made an amendment, so they changed the rule a little bit. So now we have to play up. Like you don't get to play down, you have to play up. To me, it made more sense for us to play down because we have 4A numbers, they have 4A numbers, that's where we fit, as opposed to that second year, us having 5A numbers by like 10 kids, you know? So, I, I mean, I, I understand what they're doing, but it would have been it would have been something to see, you know, playing playing down. But honestly, I think we're going to be fine. We <clears throat> Offensively, we do some really good things. We get the ball in space. We have some we have some cats. We have some we have a couple athletes. Now, again, they're just young. They're young, but we're going to we're going to put them in position to be successful. And we're not going to make any excuses for them. Like being young will not be an excuse. Like we're not going to. So oh, we're just young. We're just young. Cause you know, like I know, that's what a lot of coaches do and say, but we're, we plan on competing in this district. All right. Now, if we can, let's, let's go back to, to uh, 2020, which a lot of people don't want to go back to 2020. <laughs> uh, during the, the, the beginning stages of the pandemic, uh, I think one of the ways you go, chose to keep a lot of contact with your coaches and your kids was uh, doing this uh, thing on Twitter and TikTok, the, the, the Daily Minute. Uh, yes. Talk a little bit about that. Uh, talk a little bit about experience and what you took out of it. All right. So the morning, the morning Minute was, was born through a Zoom, to be honest with you. My first, like, when it was time to meet the kids or whatnot, I got on campus in May Creek. We met them. And when I say it wasn't three days, the pandemic hit, so we're at home. So uh, we, we have a meeting with our ADs and they tell us what we can, can't do, you know, with the, the at-home workouts or whatnot. So we call a Zoom. We're on the Zoom and I tell you, it gets, it gets hacked, right? The Zoom gets hacked. I hear some kids kind of talking crazy. I'm like, these can't be the football kids talking not like that. Well, the, fling, the, the screen, then it flipped. And when I tell you, Tony was all kind of shenanigans on that, on the thing. So I'm trying to, 
Like the kids are telling me, coaches, log them out, log them out. Well, I'm not a, I'm older than I look. So I don't, I don't know. Like I don't, I don't know all the technology. So I didn't know at the time how to, how to block them and log them out because things were moving so fast. So long story short, I just unplugged the computer, right? So we unplug it, shut everything down. And instead of trying to go back and do another Zoom, we just moved it to tr uh, Twitter, right? So we moved it to Twitter and then we just give a daily message. And some of my A-League kids would pick up on it. Some of my Mansfield kids were commenting on it. And so I was like, you know what? We're not, I'm not doing anything anyway. Like we're stuck in this house. So you might as well talk about different situations that's affected your life and how we can help others from bumping their head. My whole thing is this is that we've all been through something, Tony. You've been through something and lived through it, right? So you have value. There's something you can tell one of these kids so maybe they will avoid some of the struggles, right? Or you can share on what made you successful. And that's that's the biggest reason why we do it now still, because we still do it. And I have different coaches host them and different people. I'd love for you to host one, to be honest. So there might be some kids that want to get into um, sports media. You know, and that's an avenue with that. And that's the, that's the biggest thing. I just feel like we all have a story. Everybody on this planet has a story and it's, it's worth hearing, you know. And when you, especially dealing with kids, if you look at my staff, I got kids that play in the NFL. I got guys that play Division three football. Like all the way from the top to the bottom, I got some guys that didn't play any college football. Well, one of the reasons why we do it that way is so everybody will have somebody to talk to, right? Hey, so you're going to end up going to Texas A&M Keys. Where you're going to Division Eight, Division uh, Two school. You can go talk to Coach Randall, Coach um, <clears throat> Coach White, and Coach Mattingly, right? Like to where you could you could have you could truly have a conversation with people who've been there in your shoes. We got guys that did coach on the Power Five, that played Power Five ball. You can go talk to those guys, so they'll have an idea of what to expect. And you're talking to somebody who actually lived it as opposed to somebody that's getting something secondhand and then just giving it to you. You know, if that, if that makes any sense. Oh, it makes perfect sense. Well, uh, one more thing before I uh, let you go. Uh, what's one thing about uh, Brian Randall that most people don't know? <laughs> I'm an open book, so I, don't, I honestly don't know. Um, I'm blind in my right eye. I know that some people, they don't, Everybody didn't know that because it kind of looks, it looks normal. But if you see how I'm kind of turning cock to you, right? Right. Like I do that on purpose because it'll, it looks normal when I look kind of sideways or whatever. But if I look at you straight, you will see it kind of pull a little bit. But I'm completely blind in my right eye. Um, severed my optic nerve when I was, I guess, three. Uh, we lived in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Um, Dad was getting his doctorate. And I fell out of the second second story of the apartments we were playing on, or what? Me and my older brother were playing playing on the uh, on the stairs, like sliding into the snow. He had a big wheel. I had a tricycle. Big wheel wheels a lot bigger. Can handle that tricycle. Little kid just trying to be like big brother. Go over, and I hit my head so hard that I severed my optic nerve. So, but I, I've never known what it's like to see out of two eyes. So I I, I guess I, I have a disability. I guess, you know, I mean, it is what it is. Played college football, played high school football, um, <clears throat> took, took care of business. So, but I, I mean, I, I guess that might be something that, and I was a bouncer all through college. Uh -huh. and, and, right. So you can probably look at me and tell that a little bit, though. <clears throat> uh, well, Coach, thanks for your time.